for us. We've all been through this as a fetus. So we're going to look at this. Hmm? Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. So this topic is important because it causes lots of problems. Now look on page five or no, excuse, eight hundred and ninety-eight. Eight ninety-eight. Okay. All right. Now, when you look on page eight ninety-eight. This, you also want to make a note here. Chapter 23, this is the key. Chapter 23, page 898. Whose heart is that? Baby's. Okay, that's the baby's heart. Now, we're going to use the word fetus because this baby is in the womb. All right? It's never seen the light of day. It's in the womb. Now, fetus... Is not eating. Fetus is not breathing air. Okay? Because of those two things, the blood will be circulating in a different pattern. Okay? Now, as adults, we have a respiratory circuit because we're breathing air. We also have the hepatic portal circuit because we are digesting foods. But a fetus doesn't do that. So the blood is going to take a different route through the fetal uh, circulatory system. So just remember, fetus is not breathing air or eating food. So we're relying on mother to do the breathing and mother to do the eating. Now, she is breathing and eating and all of the nutrients and the gases will be circulated down to this organ called the placenta. Now, do you see the placenta on the drone? Okay, so that's the placenta. Now, we're going to have the blood flow. This is fetal blood. It's going to go to the placenta, and then from the placenta, we're going to go through the belly button into the fetal body. Okay. Now, that's called the umbilical vein. That's our first structure. So when you hear this thing, the first fetal structure is called the umbilical <clears throat> vein. And we're just going to write down what it does. It's going to carry oxygen and nutrients from the placenta to the fetal liver. Why are we going to the liver? It doesn't make more sense to go to the lung. Or maybe to, to the heart? Why do you think we're going to go to the liver? Clean it up. He's going to have to clean it all up. Yeah, that's a thing too. Now listen to this. Every once in a while you get a mother who doesn't take care of her body. And there might be substances in her blood that would actually damage the fetus. So the first thing we're going to do is take it through the filter. That's really smart, isn't it? So even in the womb, the child is trying to protect its blood supply. So the blood will go to the liver. That's what the umbilical vein does. Now look at the color of that vein. Is it bright red? Yes. Okay, now remember, it's called a vein because it's going to the heart, but it is full of oxygen. Okay, that might be a question right there. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> full of oxygen going to the heart. 
No, no, going to the liver. Right to the yeah, the, the key is it's an umbilical vein, and most people think umbilical artery. Yeah, it would be the umbilical yeah. artery now. In this case, it's it's bass backwards, just like the pulmonary artery. Right? So, the next structure is called the ductus venosus. Now, this is a way to skip the liver. So the blood is going to get there. And if I go through the ductus venosus, I will skip past the liver and get into the bloodstream. So some of the blood will like bypass the liver. Now, this is because otherwise the liver would take all those nutrients and all that oxygen for itself. Like what you would birth would be a liver. <laughs> yeah, you would just have a well-developed liver. Bloop. Wait, how's that? You know, you'd have to get a little <laughs> Mr. Potato Head accessories out. <laughs> so, we don't want to birth a liver. We want a whole human. Okay, so we do have to route some blood past the liver. So, then we go to our third structure. This is actually called the full Raymond. Oh, valley. I wonder what shape it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's a hole. And its purpose is to skip the lungs. The lungs. Okay. So remember, baby's not breathing, so why are we putting all the blood through the lungs? That doesn't make any sense. So we're just going to skip over from the right pump directly to the left pump. Now, this structure is the one that gives us lots of trouble. This hole in the heart is supposed to close with your very first breath of life. That deep inhale, <gasps> before they cry, that process closes up the hole. If it doesn't go so well, you might still have a hole. And the, the baby's blood will still be skipping the lungs. So the baby will not look right. They won't act right. They'll be weak, tired, and they'll could develop a bluish tinge to them. And that's what we call blue baby syndrome. This is usually the cause, is that that hole is still there. It didn't close. So, creates problem when it does not close and then we're going to write down here murmur you guys remember what a murmur is that's the irregular noise out of the heart okay and this blue baby syndrome So this is dangerous. Uh, my son was born about two years ago. I remember watching his color fluctuate. He was, he was going back and forth. He'd brighten up, then he'd go pale, brighten up, go pale. So I was watching him, and the NICU nurses, I, wa I was watching them, and they were like, <clears throat> <laughs> you know, they were, they were trying to decide to run in there and snatch him up or not. So then he just got real bright, stayed that way. And they're like, <laughs> they're gone. So they were there for that moment to see because they knew that that was a critical moment. So once they saw that color, see ya. Okay. Four. Now this one's called the ductus arteriosus. And this one is also to skip the lungs. Well, that seems redundant. This will skip the lungs. This will skip the lungs. There's a key here. We're going to skip the lungs after exercising the right ventricle. 
of the fetal heart. So if we didn't do this, let that right ventricle pump that blood, then every child would be born with a weak right side. That would mean every child would be born with right-sided heart failure. So we wanted to exercise, okay, and then skip the lungs after exercising. Is there some blood that still gets to the lungs? Probably. Mm, just enough to develop and grow on, but do we need to do gas exchange there? Nope. No. Baby's not breathing, so there's no sense in doing that. Last structure, fifth one, and the last topic for this class. <laughs> okay, so number five here is called the umbilical arteries. Okay. Now remember, there's two of them. So there's two. You have two umbilical arteries. How many umbilical veins? One. 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 Two. So now we're going to return used blood to placenta. All right. So all of the fetal wastes will be dumped into the placenta. Yeah, you got, you have to breathe for the kid, eat for the kid, pee for the kid, poop for the kid, and raise them for us to acid and breathe. Kids, um, somebody did it for us, but they must have been nuts. That's right. <laughs> I had a tough scene with my friends in the bedroom, and they said my organs couldn't handle their wastes. Is that right? Yeah, so anybody who's metabolizing will make waste, and one of them would be urea. Okay. Actually, to be honest with you, ammonia. Okay, so when we use proteins, we generate ammonia. Mm -hmm. Now, your liver is supposed to convert to urea, and then your kidneys are supposed to dispose of the urea. Okay. Now, but your twins were making those waste, ammonia and urea. And that was going across your placenta, ending up in your bloodstream. Now, when it got to your liver, it was probably overrun, and or your kidneys could not process all of it. So your levels in your blood were coming up. Now, there's a real problem with that. Have you guys ever seen somebody that has ammonia get too high? Like, when you see ammonia levels climb, that waste makes your nervous system do bizarre things. Yeah. In, you almost become like insane. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, did you notice a lot of problems like? Couldn't sleep, major anxiety, um, scratching, and itching unbelievably. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that was actually the wastes were coming to the, your skin, and your skin was trying to push them out this way because they wouldn't go through the blood. So, all of that terrible. stuff was. It, I mean, it, it was you were like out of your mind. Yeah, I feel like your blood was on fire. Like oh, yeah. Blood yeah. Yeah, so that's all that process. So <clears throat> I guess one of the techniques, if it got really radical, would be actually to dialysis your blood. So they might have put you in a dialysis treatment if it went any further. All they gave me was <clears throat> and But it was months. Oh. Yeah. What's the other thing they give you to pull the ammonia out? They give you the stuffiness. Yeah, that, that stuff will pull. Oh, lactulose. Oh, lactulose, yeah. yeah. Yeah, then that could have been another option. Mm -hmm. They might have went there just to pull that level out. But that but, was horrible. <clears throat> I mean, I was, I was really but you understand, the, those wastes can't just accumulate in the womb. Right. All right, they have to be pulled out by the placenta. So my body couldn't handle And it. probably what it was, it was twins. Mm -hmm. All right, now if you would have had a single child based on the body weight, and that or probably been a level you could have handled it. It's just that it was so much because you had two. Well, and they're combined. Three weeks early. And I was taken three weeks early because of my blood pressure. Well, it was due to the waist, but also what was their birth weight for each one? Five three and five eight. Okay, oh, so that's hot for women. Yeah. Yeah, so they were a good size. That's yeah. a lot of waste they were generating. 
Four more pounds. Oh, well, the day they were born, I lost 30 more pounds. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was all the food. And then a week and a half later, they weighed me, and I had lost 47 total. So I gained three pounds of fat real pregnancy. They told my mom she was crazy because of what she was going to But I just.